He says, all right, this next guest, his name is Alessandro Hamilton, but better known by his stage name, M-C-N-I-C-E. MC Nice is a platinum chart topping recording ar artist and producer. He has served as a producer, writer, and recording artist, working with icons like Tupac and Nas and many more world known artists. He's currently starring in The Jammies, a novelist that started on Netflix, now on Amazon Prime and Roku Xfinity. We also want to talk to him about his flavors, and I'm not talking about his music. I'm talking about his seasoning blend. God is all over this man. So let's give a warm We Talk Weekly welcome to MC Nice. Hey. Hey, what's going down? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, my brother, my brother, what's going down in the paint? My brother, how are you? Oh, man, it's all official. You know, God out here moving, and I'm moving with him. You know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah, so. Hey, when I when I heard it was a we talk situation, I was like, yeah, we got to talk about it. Yes. For sure, for sure. It's good to have you back on. Uh, you know, as we say, first of all, we got to shout out your publicist, man. She a friend to the show. She be holding y'all down, man. Yeah, you upscaling know. the building. Leslie was going down. <laughs> yeah, she be putting in the work, man. I mean, I'm excited about it. Absolutely, absolutely. So I just want to jump right in. First, thank you for coming back on the show. Mm -hmm. and for having me. yeah you know and and uh, you know one thing that i have started doing now is just asking you guys you know before i go into the full interview is how you how are you doing my brother like what's good like is everything okay all the drama and everything that has been happening in the world today you know i gotta ask you how is your day how are you oh uh, man you know when you pushing purpose you know what i'm saying i'm pushing purpose so i represent god sure. in every facet of what i do so I don't really, I don't really look at any day as, as a bad day and all my days are just prosperous days when I reflect upon, you know, where I'm headed and at the same time, what I'm doing for the culture and the kingdom. Right. For oh, sure. For sure. Absolutely. Unbelievable. And you, you have been like this your whole time. Ever since I know you, my mm. brother, you have a purpose and you sit and live on it. I want to yes, talk, I want to start right there. Like, Let's talk about purpose, right? Because it's a lot of folks out there that don't understand their purpose. How important is purpose to you? And when did you find your purpose, you know? Found my purpose as a, um, as a youth, right? When I first started going into church and my whole objective was, um, was to just seek the kingdom for myself. You know, because you hear all these things and you hear like the end times and you hear all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, you don't really know. You know, what I mean, nobody really knows. It's all speculation based on one's perspective. So for me, it was about, OK, let me come in, find out and and whatever. I was actually shunned by the church earlier in the beginning when I when I did rap, started rap. And it kind of like gave me church hurt. But then God was just like you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for me. That's you know really what I mean? So at the end of the day, it was like, okay, once I understood the purpose, his, his thing was, you know, his agenda was like, yo, I know the plan I have for you and it's your plan mm -hmm. and I'm not going to bring any harm to you. And if you understand, if you believe that wholeheartedly, then you will be prosperous. So for me, it was just like, okay, it was a hard lesson to learn because I was like, uh, is it real? Is it not real? Is it real? Is it not real? Sure. Until th certain things in my life happened where I was like, oh yeah, God is definitely real. So for me, it was like, I got saved. So how can I help others? Mm -hmm. But how can I help others without being preachy, overly preachy or overly judgmental? It was just a matter of, uh, let me get in the word and let me show them by example. 
simply what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't go when he hung out with all the all the naysayers and all that. He didn't come in there and be like, yo, you know, get God. He was like, this is who God is through me. And then, you know, people turned around their lives. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Nice. I have a question. So yes, I love music, all genres, hip hop, R&B, classics, jazz, you name it. I love it. Why is it that they have to break it up to call rap, if you're mentioning God, gospel? I mean, Kanye, is he's put God in a lot of his music. Why do they have to break it down like that? Why can't it just be all, like, just rap? But if you're rapping about God, why do, why do they have to break it down? Or is that's, that something that you want? No, it's a, that's a fantastic question, right? So when you think about rap in the beginning, what did it start out being? It started out being spiritual to begin with, mm-hmm. you know, when when it was all about the struggle, what was going on in the kingdom and in, in the in the in the communities, and you know, and pretty much it was ran by the the by by Islam, you know, the one percenters, the five percenters. Mm-hmm. So Sunni, you know, right. um, so it was been a spiritual situation. It's obviously when gangster rap came into the fold, it changed the whole dynamic of rap. But the bottom line is with 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 um, with Christian hip hop. You know, we in a society that don't really, you know, they don't really, they don't really like everybody want to praise God, but don't want you to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's just like with us, I think Christian, being a Christian hip hop or in gospel rap, at the end of the day, you're upheld to a whole different standard. Like in the secular side of things, you can talk about God and, 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 and go do whatever you want. You can cuss, you can drink, you can do whatever. But on the Christian, on the Christian and gospel side, you got to uphold morals because you got you got believers looking at you, looking to be led. You got those that left, you know, the secular side coming in, looking to be led. If you give them the same thing that they have over there, so why did they even come into the faith? So I believe that the the reason being for that is to identify, you know, the 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 faith, you know, uh, the faith uh, the faith rappers that's going to, you know, that would minister to the people that is coming in and looking for it. Man, fantastic, fantastic, brother. When we talk about faith, that's something that <clears throat> a lot of people don't necessarily understand, right? You know, they think faith, you know, the first thing they think of is, you know, the church, you know, got to have faith, right? Um, but, you know, Martin Luther King said something, and I'll never forget. This is a quote that I always remember and I, and I stand by. The first step of faith is to take the first step. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step, right? And the environment that we're in right now, you know, people are nervous. People are losing faith, right? People are l- losing, you know, they're they're running away. You mentioned Islam, you 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 know, you're 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 a Christian and, and you know, it's a lot of people running away from the church, running away from the mosque, running away from you know, religion all together, you know, what's your thoughts on that? And how would you inspire those to have just a bit more faith, you know? Yeah, um, it, it's interesting because even in Christian hip hop, we have people leaving Christian hip hop because they feel like, you know, artists or, or not artists, but people don't appreciate that. But at the end of the day, how can if you're a Christian, you can't leave Christian hip hop because you're a Christian that's doing hip hop. So you're Christian hip hop, right? There's been faith records coming out all the time. They just don't label them because of the different hierarchies that are in place. So for instance, Buster Rhymes dropped an album that was completely, you know, geared towards his beliefs system and faith, but nobody called that a spiritual record. Kanye drops a record only because he's from this, he's from, from a financial standpoint, he can um, attract masses. It won't get labeled as Christian rap because of, his stature financially, you know what I mean? So those that are leaving or those that are seeking situations, they have to actually ask themselves, you know, if you were a believer, right, why are you leaving? Because God says to trust him, not man. You know what I mean? Even even religion, uh, when you think about um, religion, 
religion was created by man, not by mm -hmm. God. So if you truly believe and you truly walk in, God says, for I know the plan I have for you, saith the Lord, and that's the plan for good and not evil, so that you should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So God's saying, yo, you hold tight to me and you believe in me, then I will look out for you. So if you being led from the church of me and this, then are you really doing your duties as a, as a believer to uh, uphold those faiths that you believe? Mm. Jeez. That was heavy. Yeah. You, <laughs> you preaching, my brother. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you had yeah, me like, just, whoa. <laughs> you know, but you have to believe because the, the, way, this, the, the way the system is designed, we all right. look up. Even yeah, atheists sure. look up to people. Mm -hmm. They have to look, you know what I'm saying? So when you think about it, it'd be like, I don't believe in God, but they believe in whoever is, is giving them those, those, those that, that uh, leadership. Sure. We all have leaders. We all, man is designed to look up. Woman is designed to look up. We praise the flag. We look up to the sky. We, we designed to look up. Hmm. See, wow. think about that, right? Man, so at the end of the day, right. if you're going, if you're going, yo, well, God has let me down. Did he? Right, right, right. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or did you let yourself God down? Damn about that, right? Well, anyway, I, I can go on, but yeah, that, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, we, oh man, we gonna have to have a talk mm -hmm. after this, my brother. Because yeah, <laughs> yes. you're, you're preaching, I love it, I love Preacher, it, I love it. Rapper, seasoner. Yeah, <laughs> seasoner. I was just about to go on there. I was just about to go. So you know, <laughs> you know, great transition. You know, we got to talk a little bit about what what is the world seeing right now. Talk to us a little bit about this. So, um, I have a I have a cooking show that's coming out this fall. It'll be on television. Um, we narrowing down the uh, couple of networks that's going to be on, but it's going to be the first, one of the first hip hop mainstream cooking shows. So it's called the hip hop cook house with MC nice. So I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking. That's right. Ooh. I'm on the grill. I always say when I'm not on the road, repping the rock, keeping it real, I'm behind the stove and the grill with the mills. You know what ah. I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, uh, so it's me in the kitchen with a DJ cause I'm every good cook needs theme music. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So, um, and I'm just giving you like breakfast, lunch, dinner, sometimes brunch, but just simplistic, a simplistic way to do it, but with a complicated look, you know what I mean? So yeah, so that's the, the show's coming. The, right, right, the hip hop right, cookhouse right. with MC Nice, and I'm gonna be showcasing my new seasoning. By the way, um, Nice Blend, hey. it's in, you know, it's available now. You can check it out. So it's rosemary, um, <clears throat> rosemary, onion, garlic, and cumin. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's oh yeah, it's fire. All right, so now I'm gonna have to fuss at Leslie a little bit because uh, she should have <laughs> sent, sent some down here. So yeah, we, we got. Can... You know what? I'll make sure y'all get some. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. nice. Where, where are you located? <laughs> nice. Where are you located? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, we need to come out so we can have. You know how they did, do the tasters, and we set up. Yeah. There. Well, you know, every, every every year LA has a thing called the Taste of Soul. You know what I'm saying? Where you can just it's blocks upon blocks where you just tasting food. When when is is it in the summertime? I I would have to double check. Yeah, I'd Let be quoting know. everything wrong right now. You, you got foodies over here. Oh yeah, I'm a foodie. Yeah. So you know what I mean? That's the funny. That's what people don't know is that even though I, I you know I got record records out platinums. You know what I mean? My whole I love to cook. So you know my first episode is 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 what I call my Cali brioche French toast. Right. So I got, you know, French toast on brioche, but then I also got my golden double fried potatoes. You know what I mean? The yellow mm -hmm. garlic onion crispy. Oh, man. You can check my IG and uh, you can get your, get feast, uh, feast your eyes on those. And yeah, you're going to want a plate. <laughs> like, yo, y'all going to want some of this. Uh huh. No doubt. No doubt. So I'm a vegetarian. What you got for me, bro? Like, you know, you got a special dish and meal for me. Um, yo, so. I do this thing. I got my Cali mac and cheese, right? Uh, where I hold make... up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Because that is my... When you say mac and cheese, I'm oh, thinking yeah. about it now. All right, yeah, mac and I, cheese. I, I, <laughs> then I only use... And the, the bomb part is I use three cheeses. That's it. I don't need a, a million cheeses to, you know, to, to, uh, to make mac and cheese. I use three cheeses. And I guarantee, yeah... You gonna you gonna dig that? But you gotta have a certain um, secret recipe. Do you use cream cheese? Do you put like is something in there you put to make it? Um, I use uh, well, I'm gonna tell you. There's um, 
there's there's I use yeah, I use a craft product. Let's just say there. Oh, okay. you know what I'm yeah, let it out. All right. We understand. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. I use a craft product. But uh but uh my one of the things I like to cook though is uh my um uh lemon pepper garlic shrimp is absolutely oh. fire. Buttered my brown butter lemon pepper garlic shrimp. Yo, let me tell you something. Can I you know, don't be mad that I last year I finally had my taste on lemon pepper. I never I never even heard of lemon pepper. Now I'm addicted to it. You are talking <laughs> to somebody who don't cook literally, right? You uh -huh. talking about somebody if it don't go in a microwave, I ain't eating it. Or if I can't pull it out the if I can't pull it out the yard, it's gotta like, yo, you know. So I didn't cook, but I had when I tasted lemon pepper, I said, This is the only seasoning that I need. I'm right. glad you're on board, man. <laughs> Until you showed me your seasoning that uh, you know, you you on record no, by saying well, get, and guess what? It's no salt. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. So that that's the that's the other part. It's no salt. So you, since you like lemon pepper, yeah. my next flavor is going to be uh, black garlic and red onion. Mm. That has never hit the market. For when sure. you when you taste that, first off, when you taste the first one, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm in. But when you taste the second one, you're gonna be like, I'm really in. So you but yeah, black garlic, red too, onion right? hasn't even hasn't even hit the market nowhere. So you sending so, that down, right? <laughs> no, well, we're still developing that right now. Okay, all right. All right, well, you make sure you send that down, too. I'm right on Leslie Hills. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. So, so listen, what's your what's your number one dish or your, your, your the dish that you prepare and it's just like, this is it? Well, that's what I said. Uh, my brown butter, lemon pepper, garlic mm -hmm. shrimp mm -hmm. is that's it. absolutely phenomenal because it's, it's crispy fried, right? But then it's also tossed in butter, garlic. You know what I mean? Lemon juice. Like, it's it's real. It's uh, real official. The wife and kids, I know they be like, all right, Dad, you cooking again tonight? And, uh, yeah. Is that your way of finding out? I don't have no wife ah! and kids, so we good. <laughs> <laughs> that was slick. Yo. That was slick. No, 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 there's, no, 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 there, no. there's none of that. <laughs> well, the one thing with me is that every time, like, my ex-husband or when I'm in relationships, I don't like to cook anymore. So I do find a man... Who knows how to find his way in the kitchen? I'm a yeah. great cleaner, but yeah, when I it thought, comes to cooking, I, I, clean, I, I like clean to too. eat. Okay. I clean. Yeah, I clean. <laughs> but the, the beauty about the beauty about it is I know how to cook, cook for real, for real. So they, I don't just go in there and warm up pots. You know what I mean? <laughs> I go in there and get down. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I warm my pots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, or a that's, microwave. That's awesome. You know. Uh, uh, Proverbs thirty one, you know who. Oh hey, scripture, woman. I got you. So give give us some advice because you know you you dibble and dabble in a whole bunch of stuff. You know you cook, you you, you clean, you, you on a mic, you dope on the mic, you Preach clean, it. you you know give some some uh uh nuggets to those those men at home that they like. Wow. Well, I always tell you know more. for I mean just in general, one of my models is for any great achievement, someone has to be the first to do it. So why not you? Right. Ooh, so that's absolutely. me is one. Another one is strive for perfection so that you limit your mistakes. No relationship is going to be perfect. You know what I mean? No one man or no woman is going to be perfect. But if you're constantly striving to be the best you that you can be, then you'll limit those mistakes that you've made because you're trying to be the best you that you can be. So, you know, on that, that's on that front. Now, from a business standpoint, I use a um, I use a terminology called SWOT analysis. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're familiar with developing a business plan, you know, that SWOT analysis, SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Right. right? These yeah. are the things you need to know in order for somebody to come in and invest in your business. But take that and make it applicable to your daily life. What is your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, put, make that applicable to your relationship. What is the strength of this relationship? What is the weaknesses? Because that's the only way you're going to persevere. And, 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 and uh, I said triumph through the trials. Absolutely. I love that you said, you know, wow. you mentioned like the business and the SWOT analysis and all that. And, and we were just discussing Juneteenth and, and you know, all the the happiness that's come out of it, you know, and, and we're two years post we're in the post George Floyd era. And mm -hmm. a lot of companies have promised to help out, you know, um, entrepreneurs and stuff like that. Have you received any support? 
um, or do or, or if you know about like any support that black entrepreneurs are receiving and what do you think about the progress that's been made? One, um, the progress is, is, is coming along, but I think in order for progress to really be official, we have to be willing to help one another. You know what I'm saying? We can't depend on no entity outside of us to help us when we're the strongest buyers on the planet. You know, when you look at the Nielsen uh, understanding of, of consumers that are buying stuff, it's the African-American consumer that's that's spending all the money, but we just not spending it with each other. Mm -hmm. See, that's the, and I always call that a, a, a bad case of meism, like me, my, and mine's versus we, us, and ours. You know what I mean? So if we adopt that mentality, then that's where, you know, that's where we'll triumph. So um, when I look at the progress of that, I look at the progress in regards to black businesses are starting to be, you know, um, developed. But the, pro the problem is, are we really digging back and helping each other? And now it's not even on some ra some racial thing. It's just a matter of we're not everybody else help themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, the Latino side of me, I'm Puerto Rican and black. Man, my Puerto Ricans go hard for Puerto Ricans. You know what I'm saying? The Latinos go hard for Latinos, but blacks, oh, no, nah. me, mine, mine. I can't, I don't want you to, you know, and not knowing that there's, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of money in, to be had, and you'll never be richer than the government. They can crash a $2 billion plane and be like, oh, we just crashed the B2, let's build another. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The $2 billion. So at the end of the day, if we're not helping one another, we're not going to move forward. We just gonna be we just gonna be complaining and complaining and complaining. The only way you can affect things is by owning things and then making change within that ownership. Wow, that that was that was dope. That was dope <laughs> right there. You know, it, it's I do feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the black community with as far as like us helping one another. We always not all of us. I don't. I'm not gonna say all of us, but um, a lot of times we have that crab in the bottom of the barrel mentality when it comes to supporting one another and it's like when we see somebody getting ahead it's like we want to hate on them or you know celebrate that person it's it's enough room at the table for everybody and then like if you're trying to get to the table and you can't you know a certain table build your own you know what i'm saying so yeah but you know what it all it all goes back to the swat it's understanding mm -hmm. what you're getting into so if you are a business and you are you a woman and you black well, they got minority Scott. They got minority uh, grants for that. They got they, there's a whole lot of uh, things that that can be done for businesses if you really dive into what it is that you're doing because there's money available. It's just that we don't tap in because we don't know about it, and the reason we don't know about it is because we're not really researching. We go, oh yeah, I want to braid hair, so I'm gonna go open a braid business, but not knowing that you know there's 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 money available for that business if you add a component of teaching. Absolutely. Wow, bro. Well, I, I have one more question sure, for sure. MC Nice. Um, your acting debut, could you expound on that a little bit? Tell us a little bit more about that. And it's on Netflix? Oh, yeah. So um, I, I'm, I'm actually one of the creators of the cartoon. It's a cartoon called The Jammies, uh, D-A-J-A-M-M-I-E-S, The Jammies. And it's the first African-American animated music series that was on Netflix. Um, it is now on Amazon Prime, Roku, Apple TV, and I believe Hulu. Um, and so it's about five kids from the suburbs that sing, dance, and rap, and their whole objective is to be, you know, the next R&B hip hop stars while tackling, you know, life as kids, right? In the sense of bullying, obesity, self-awareness, like we tackled all this homelessness. We tackled it in a way to where it wasn't overly preachy, but at the same time, delivering the message because, you know, what I noticed is that watching while watching TV is a lot of wizardry and magic, but no real life lessons like the days of, uh, I believe, like Fat Albert and, um, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the things that had substance. There was no more substance. And so that was the whole objective for that. So me playing, I play the character novelist, which is nice. So nice stands for novelist is constantly evolving. Most of my peers know me as novelist. MC means I'm a lyricist. So I'm a lyricist that's constantly evolving. And that's MC Nice. And so I play the character novelist in the cartoon. And that's I'm the level headed one that comes in and 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 figures out a solution, you know, for everything. And um, 
and run with it. So it was really dope working with Kale Mitchell, uh, Darius McCrary, who's in it, uh, Uncle Phil before he passes in it, Debo before he passed is in it, wow. Kim Whitley. You know, it's a lot of uh, you know, mm. Curtis Blow, yo, yo, I can go on. It's a whole lot of people, Darius McCrary, um, and it, that that's a part of that. And the, the beauty about this is, so this is a cartoon that I helped create, but my uncle was the first ever black animator at Disney. Wow. Uh, Ron husband. So, you know, it was, it was, it, it's, it's, it's like passed on through, even though I didn't go to him to do the cartoon, he now knows about it. And he's even overjoyed because it looks like a Disney product and we didn't go through Disney to do it. Wow. Mm. Mm, man, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic, that's fantastic, man. fantastic man. You know what? Every time you come on, man, you give us uh, some great conversation. And I think, you know, it's hard to not appreciate uh not only your talent um but your intellect and how introspective you are right mm -hmm. and so before we let you go time flew already we already you are, we already at the top of the hour but um you know you gotta throw us a 16 or something bro you know i gotta put you on the spot for that you gotta give me something bro <laughs> uh, for real that's where we at that's where we at man <laughs> yo i stay binging out on the word could have been a shooter with a Glock and a Ruger, but my life was deterred. Ain't no other ruler better than Yahshua, y'all frauds is absurd. Switching lanes when the weather changed, better understand his return. Better understand his return. I stay incredible like the Bruces. Yeah, Wayne Banner and Willis through the glass. I'm a Jackson with the Crusa. Fix around my neck, sworn to protect any disrespect you can spruce up. Grab the carrots, let's juice up. So your vision is with precision and the opposition can't roost ya. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I gotta give you a round of applause for that. That's my guy that the, right there. That was, that was yeah. My, that was my God, appreciate you. You already know how we feel about you when we talk weekly. And uh, you know, before we let you leave, why don't you tell everybody where they can get in contact with you? But I also want you um to give a word. You know, we talked about faith earlier, and it's people that will be watching this, and it may be down. You know, and and mm -hmm. may not you know, Phil, um, there's any hope and you're, you're, you, you know, you are full of it. You are full of faith. And I know that somebody can kind of benefit off a of word. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the mic brother. And I want you to tell <laughs> everybody how they can get in contact with you and give somebody a word out there. Yeah. So you can reach me at MC nice, uh, LA. So that's E M C E E N I C E L A on Twitter, Instagram, MC nice music on Facebook. Uh, mcnice.com um also shout out to uh the spin awards i was nominated for six awards this week so uh and then i won three gospel hip-hop awards a couple of weeks ago so you know shout out you know shout out to that and um yeah so the i guess the word i leave is that you know it's always the word impossible right everybody thinks it's, you know life is impossible because you can't get this get that but if you change the mindset to i'm possible you can achieve mm everything right so impossible to impossible and never look at the glass is half empty look at the glass is half full and that you almost there wow wow yo there you oh, go man that just made me think of one more thing and i'm sorry because we've been holding you up but like that's no, all good yeah top of the hour give us top of the hour oh i'm sorry you can keep no go ahead you got it just you you're listening to WPPM LP Philadelphia 106.5 FM. We talk weeklies after the talk, and we at the top of the hour with my guy, MC N I C E. Sizzle, give me holler. I, I just was thinking, like, you know, you, you've you topped the Billboard charts with some of the, you know, the, the legends out there right now, the Travis Greens and all that. Like, how, did you expect anything like that when you were you were a youth and, and you were shunned or, you know, pushed away by the church? Did you expect, like, this great success that you have? Not, not for myself because, uh, you know, so let me, a little inside. I started out with the first Latin rap group in the history of rap music, cracked the billboard charts called The Lighter Shade of Brown, right? We did a song called, hey, DJ, won't you play that song? Keep them dancing all yeah, night, right? So we had, you know, we started with that record. We put out the greatest hits, but it wasn't like my personal. I was just in a, in a, in a, in a group. And then when we, when I produced Tupac, you know, it was just like the, it was an iconic record, Thug's Mansion, the acoustic version, right? So that was iconic. It was just Pac and some some guitar. You know what I mean? So, and it was just like, okay, but it still wasn't my record. 
And then when I put out the record with Stacey Dash and got co-signed with uh, by uh, Russell Simmons, I thought, yo, we on our way. It's going down. You know what I mean? And that didn't happen. But when God brought me into Christian hip hop and he was just like, I need you to go over there and make this happen. I was like, oh, life is over. You know what I'm saying? But I'm being obedient, Lord. I got you. And then when I came in, because I all that knowledge I gained from, you know, the secular side of it, I was able to propel myself to five number one records on the Billboard charts, including the number one gospel album wow. as an independent artist. Wow. You see, there wasn't no major dollars involved. And then not to mention that the the church side of it, the gospel side of it was they attacked me. Mm. You know, mm. full bore. Mm. And it was just like, yo, oh, I'm over man. here, you know, do, get, doing the Lord's work. But it did, you know, when the way they came at it was what it is. But I stayed steadfast. You know what I mean? I stay focused and purpose driven and God pulled me through the storm. Mm. Mm. That's that's awesome. There's no greater like self gratification than being obedient and and you know, seeing the blessings that that come back from your obedience. Like that's just there's no greater high. Amen. Than that. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on all your. Success. I appreciate that. I make sure I get y'all some of this seasoning so y'all hey. can, you know, holler back at me and be like, "Yeah, nice. We yeah. love you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time for some ribs for the stomach. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. I know that's right. Well, shout out. That's my boy, my guy, yes, MC sir. Nice. Shout out to Leslie Logan too. I told you I'm a fuss at it because uh, she knew you was coming on for a little while. Now. She <laughs> had some time to send me some of that. Hey, yo. In all fairness, though, <laughs> okay. She did oh, you ask me you defending some... her now, huh? Oh, heck yeah, of course. Okay, my guy. <laughs> in, all fairness, <laughs> you know in all fairness, she did ask me, and this is the word. This, I mean, I put my hand on it. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She did ask me for seasoning to send out to you know to, to peoples right, and y'all you know, i'm sure that was you was on that list so right. but we're gonna make sure y'all get it so that way you'll be like yeah oh my god that's my guy right there mc yeah. nice it's your boy charles gregory we talk weekly after the talk on wpp uh, wppm lp philadelphia 106.5 fm we talk weeklies after the talk with your boy charles gregory and a beautiful Lawrence, and a beautiful a and my guy mc nice in the building <laughs> Hey. All day. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl Lauren Sizzle, and you are now tuned in to one of the hottest talk shows in the nation. We talk weeklies after the talk. I'm Classy Lady Sparkle. You want to binge listen to our shows? Follow the We Talk Weeklies podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Spreaker. What up, folks? This your boy Charles Gregory. Make sure to follow us on all our socials at We Talk Weekly. Hey, y'all, it's your girl Lily. So make sure you keep it locked to We Talk Weekly on 106.5 FM. FM.